Well, it's great to be here. Uh, my name is J.J. O'Connor, and I am a proud member and athlete of, uh, of Glassa. Um, I play power soccer. It's uh, a sport for people in power wheelchairs. And uh, this year, we're getting our butts kicked. <laughs> the captain's been slacking. I've got to do a better job, I think. Um, but it's a, it's, a, it's a great organization to be a part of. And um, I'm super proud to be here and, uh, and to represent the athletes uh, of Glassa. You see, I grew up playing sports. I grew up on the north side of Chicago. And I played, thank you very much. And uh, growing up, I played just about every sport there was. I played uh, baseball and football, and I swam and um, golfed. Uh, but my absolute favorite sport was hockey. If I could wake up and play hockey all day long, that was a perfect day for me. And I remember how I got into hockey. I was uh, in, in first grade, or kindergarten, and uh, I came home from school, and I was crying to my mom. And some kid at school had been picking on me. And instead of um, giving me a pat on the back or comforting me, she said, that's it. We need to toughen you up. You're playing hockey. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. She's here tonight. <laughs> She's a pretty tough lady. I was a pretty good hockey player. I don't know how, uh, how far I would have went. Uh, but I had dreams of playing in the NHL, scoring the game-winning goal in Game 7, the NHL, making millions of dollars and being a celebrity. All those dreams that kids have growing up playing sports. I had dreams of going to college. Matter of fact, I was going to go to Lake Forest College. I had hoped to play hockey there. Coach Fritz is here. I'm sure you would have had a spot for me, right, Coach? <laughs> I had lots of dreams. They all involved sports, specifically hockey. When I was 16 years old, it was my first game of the season that, that year. And I was really excited about this game because we were playing the, the Skokie Flyers. And it was a team that I had friends on. I knew the entire team because I had played for that team the year prior. But this season, unfortunately, they felt that there were other players that were better than I. And they cut me. And I had never been cut from any hockey team before. So I was bound and determined to go out and show them that they made the wrong decision. The first shift, I felt as light as a feather. I was ready to go. The puck was dumped in the corner. I was hustling in. I had a full length of ice, skating as fast as I could. The defenseman on the other team, his name was Rich. He was probably my best friend on the other team. He was a big guy. He was about 6'4". I was much smaller at the time. But I was fast, so I was thinking, I'm going to get in and get out, because if he gets a hold of me, I'm dead. And as we both were chasing after the puck, we just tripped on each other. We got our feet tangled up, and I fell into the boards head first. He fell on feet first and got up and skated away, and I didn't. And in that brief second, all of those dreams, everything that I knew in life was now different. My entire life was changed in less than a second. I knew right away something was very wrong. As I laid on the ice, I looked over and I saw my hand, and it didn't look like my hand. I couldn't move or feel anything. I remember the, the referees didn't move me, the coaches didn't move me. It was quite important at that time because I was in such a critical state. Somehow, though, I found myself somewhat excited about the ambulance ride. I don't know how that's possible, but <laughs> let me save you the, the suspense. You don't need to ride it in an ambulance. It's not very exciting at all. I had broken my neck, and I was paralyzed from the neck down. They brought me to the hospital, and when I got there, they did lots of tests, and I was awake long enough to see uh, my parents come in the room. 
smile and tell me how much they love me. I didn't know this, but after they left the room, they brought them into a little room and sat them down and said, well, your son has is, is broken his neck and, and we give him 50-50 to make it through the night. Now my parents, obviously, they couldn't believe this because I had played thousands of hockey games. Now their son was laying there barely alive in less than a second. Thankfully, I made it through the night. The next day, though, they brought my parents into that room again and said, well, he made it through the night, but we're going to have to do surgery, and we don't expect him to live through surgery. We give him 50-50, and if he does, he'll never move anything. He'll be lucky to turn his head. Well, I made it through surgery, and one year later, I stood and took three steps to receive my high school diploma. They don't know everything. After that night, when I was in the hospital, I remember the biggest and most uh, best thing for my day, the thing that I looked forward to more than anything, was to get pushed down to the door so they could open the door and I could feel the breeze. Be outside a little bit and feel the sun on my face. That was the best part of my day. I was 16 years old. A few weeks earlier, I was on top of the world. A cocky 16-year-old that knew everything. Nobody could stop me. I didn't listen to my parents, and I would fight with my five sisters as much as I could. I remember my first Christmas home after I got injured. My six-year-old sister at the time, Shannon, she uh, came and jumped on my lap and said, JJ, I can't wait to play baseball with you again. She was only six. She didn't see anything other than JJ. Didn't matter to her that I was in a wheelchair. Didn't matter. There was no disability to her. I was the same person. You see, we use the word disability, and it's, it's a word that we can visibly see that I have a disability. And it's a comfortable word because it's just a way to kind of identify it. But really, everybody in here has disabilities. It's just some more, are more visible than others. But what glass is about and what I've learned is it's about your abilities, not your disabilities. We can all focus on the disabilities. Each one of us have them. But it's our, about our abilities that make us who we are. A year after I got hurt, I went to Craig Hospital in Colorado. And at that time, I was bound and determined that I was going to walk again, that I was going to walk out of the hospital and get on with my life. I had done rehab for a year. I had you know, done all the things that I needed to do. But I was still not going to give up. I had some movement. I was some, you know, getting better. That was what I didn't understand life. I didn't, never thought that I would be in a wheelchair 17 and a half years later. So Craig Hospital was going to give me the magic pill, the therapy that I was going to walk out and be fine and get on with my life. And after a week of testing, they said, JJ, I'm sorry, but there's nothing we can do. You're going to have to go home and get on with your life. I didn't understand what that meant. And I remember my walk back from meeting with the doctors to the room that I had stayed in, and I saw a dog running and jumping and playing with its, with its owner. I thought to myself, this dog has more of a life than I do. It was the lowest point of my life. Didn't know what I was going to do. That next day, we did some sightseeing. It was our last day before we went home. And we went to the top of Pikes Peak. And as I sat at the top of Pikes Peak and looked out at the most magnificent sight your eyes could possibly gaze upon, I thought to myself, well, JJ, you have two choices here. You can either go home feeling sorry for yourself and let this get to you, or you can go home with a smile on your face and beat it. Just because you're in a wheelchair doesn't mean that you can't have a great life. Just because things are tough doesn't mean you can't overcome them. I think that's a choice all of us have every day. Every day you wake up and you can look out and say, I have two choices. I can either go through this day and conquer it, over 
overcome all the adversity, whatever comes at me with a smile on your face. Or you can feel sorry for yourself and let things get to you. I found that life is much more fun and much easier to do it with a smile than with a frown. I've also learned about goal setting. I've learned about goal setting and how important it is to, to set a goal, to climb a mountain, if you will. You see, I said that I was going to walk again, and I will not give up until that happens. Someday it will, and I won't ever give up. That's my Pike's Peak. That's my mountain to climb. Whenever you climb a mountain, too, you always have a rope. That rope will catch you and put you back on the mountain, but it can never do the, mount, uh, the, the climbing for you. That's your support system. That's the people around you. I will walk again. That's my mountain. But I have lots of other goals that I found. And I've learned the importance of sport. I've learned that sport is also a goal. You see, I grew up playing all those sports. But they're more important to me now than ever. Playing for the Glass of Fire power soccer team has made my life better. It has improved the quality of my life. Those same values that I learned playing sport when I was young are even more so now. I'm able to socialize with people that are in a similar situation. We're able to come together as a team and set a goal and work hard towards, towards that goal. My life is better because of Glassa. I can't imagine not being able to play a sport. It really is who I am. Now, when I look back and I say to myself, JJ, at 15, 16 years old, you thought success was making millions of dollars, playing in the NHL, scoring a game-winning goal in Game 7. That's not what success is. Success is doing whatever it is that you do to the best of your ability being the best at whatever it is you have in front of you and doing it with a smile on your face. Class has helped to teach me that and I'm a better person because of the group. I hope all of you enjoy your night tonight because what you're doing here tonight is making my life and many like me have a better life every day. Thank you very much. Thank you.